All right, in this section of the video bootcamp series, we're going to cover firing ordnance at vehicles and armored vehicles and how that's going to work. Make sure you watch the previous video to understand the basics of firing ordnance because I'm not going to go over that again in this video. Now, one of the first things that you need to understand when firing ordnance at a vehicle target is the angle of impact is going to matter when determining your shell hit. So let's look at this Sherman tank here as an example. You can see the front of the tank as delineated by the red arrow at the front, and it's very simple. The two hexes bisected by this red arrow are the front, considered the front armor, the side two hexes are considered the side armor, and the rear two hexes are considered the rear armor. Now when you look at the bottom left counter, uh, the counter, you see three rows of numbers, the top row being the front armor, middle row being middle armor, obviously, bottom row being the rear armor. Now, if the vehicle has a turret like this Sherman does, the, uh, it's separated by a slash and the first set of numbers will be the hull armor and the second set of numbers will be the turret armor. You're going to determine which one of those is hit by the attacker's attack roll. When they're rolling to hit, if it is greater than two and even, so four, six, eight, 10, or 12, then it is considered to have hit the turret. Any other number rolled by the attacker will be considered against the hull armor itself. Also, when you're attacking with ordnance, if you hit an unarmored vehicle like this Jeep here, which you can tell is unarmored because it has stars for where its armor numbers would be, then it is destroyed outright if it is hit and simply replaced with a wreck marker. Now for the rest of ordnance attacks, let's say our Tiger 1 is firing at this Sherman tank here and we can tell by the angle of attack that it's passing through our front hex and let's say he rolls to hit and he hits the hull armor. So five for our defenders here. If the Tiger 1's attack were being traced through the bisecting part of these two hexes here, instead it would go towards the side. You always favor the attacker when you're uh, tracing your line of attack in between two hexes. At that point, you're going to take and roll 1d6 for the attacker and 1d6 for the defender. And for the attacker, you will add their penetration value at whatever range that they're attacking. We can see three hexes away at range seven hexes or under, they're gonna have a penetration value of eight. So the Tiger one will roll 1d6 and add eight. Let's say they hit the front hull armor of our Sherman, which means a five. For their armor so they're going to roll a 1d6 and add 5 to it and then they're going to compare the results now before we get to the results if the attacker rolls a 1 and the defender rolls a natural 6 that means the attack is a dud there's no effect but if the reverse happens the attacker rolls a 6 and the defender rolls a 1 it's considered a catastrophic hit the tank would automatically be replaced with a wrecked marker and destroyed the rest of the results, let's say our modified penetration value for our Tiger 1 exceeded the modified defense value for our defender. That means the defender would be destroyed. They would be replaced with a wrecked marker at that point. And you would roll 1d6. And on the result of a 1, you would take a good order crew marker and place it here with the wrecked marker under a moved marker. It means the crew escaped the, the tank being destroyed. Now, if their rolls equaled, so the modified penetration roll equaled our modified defense roll, at that point, the defender would take a morale check. If they fail, then the tank would be abandoned and a shaken crew marker would be placed. If they passed, the tank would simply become shaken. Now, if the attacker's roll is less than the defender's roll, they also take a morale check, but this time they would get to subtract the difference between the two rolls from their morale check, making it easier to pass. If they fail, then the sh uh, tank will become shaken, and if they pass, then there will be no effect. However, if the tank were already shaken when they were making that attempt and it becomes shaken again, then the tank is abandoned as normal.